me just open that out. There. Oh, good morning, everybody. Isn't it glorious out there? It's been absolutely beautiful for the last few days, hasn't it? A little bit cloudy yesterday, but um, did you have a good weekend? Were you out and about? Um, it was absolutely lovely up in Stratford. It really was. Saturday was baking uh, and I actually managed to sit out in the garden and I didn't get jumped on and bitten by the puppy too much. Um, luckily, she isn't here today. She's with her dad, which is really cool. Um, because I wanted to talk to you today about springtime tops. Now, it is still that kind of slightly in between sort of weather. It's warm, but it isn't quite hot enough to go completely bare arms in the evenings anyway. I know when I'm sitting out in the garden in the evening, I need something over the top of my shoulders kind of thing. So um, it's a quite a nice one to think about the kinds of tops that you can wear over things, if you see what I mean. Now, um, morning Karen, how are you? Summer has still not arrived in the west of Scotland. Karen, apparently, I've been told this, spring travels up the country at roughly walking pace, apparently. Who knew? Which is about four miles an hour. So maybe it will be there, hopefully it'll be there soon. Uh, morning Linda, lovely and sunny here in London. Oh, morning Donna, how are you? Lovely to see everybody here this morning. Thank you for joining us. It's really good to see everybody. Um, so tops, that's what we're looking at at the moment. Different things that you can put over other things, primarily. Um, I'm wearing this morning the uh, linen top from the book, Sewing for the Soul. Um, I forgot to get, well, grab one this morning, actually. No, there isn't anyone around. It might, there might be one on the, on the shelf, actually. I should have been more organised today, shouldn't I, really? You can't see one, never mind, don't worry. Um, oh, actually, there might be one. <laughs> oh, Harriet's running around trying to find a book now. Um, they might be just underneath the table there, or there might be some on the shelf. Anyway, anyway, we'll come back, we'll find a book and we'll come back in a minute, don't worry. Um, morning, Gretchen. Morning, Julia. M uh, loved your um, Eleanor Top, Julia. She posted a picture on our So Me Something Friends group and it looks amazing, it really does. Look fabulous. Morning, Olivia. Hello, how are you? Hope you're getting on all right at your new job. Thanks for joining us. Um, Pam says, morning, anybody in from the diploma? Pam, hold your horses. It doesn't start until July, so don't worry. We will be getting more information out there, so don't panic about that. You will have plenty of time to do your homework before the first session. And if anyone else is interested in the diploma, we had our graduation the other weekend and it went so brilliantly. We were so lucky with the weather. It was absolutely glorious. The ladies have achieved so much they really have we're going to be putting up some more pictures um, from the diploma graduation as well so if you want to be a part of that there is still time to enter um, the application form is on the website all you've got to do is fill that out the dates for the studio sessions are there as well so don't panic if you aren't able to make a couple of them it's not a big deal it really isn't because the are the kind of taught parts of the diploma are going to be recorded. So you will be able to watch those back later. So you're not going to miss out on anything. It does make a big difference if you're able to be here in the studio, obviously. And that's one of the reasons why we've made it a studio based um, diploma session, diploma this year. Um, we are looking at having things done in a slightly different way and different other courses that you can join, but that's going to be for a little bit later. The main thing is the camaraderie that developed through the diploma sessions. Everybody has got on so wonderfully and have remained friends and are still in touch. And it's lovely, it really is, because that's what sewing is all about, isn't it? It kind of brings people together, which is really cool. Um, let's see, oh, we've got a few more people joining us this morning, which is rather lovely. Um, Morning, Anne. How are you? Feels very summery here today as you're making strawberry jam. Last year's freezer glut. Oh, aren't you good? Um, morning, Ali. Loving my red top. Morning, Debbie from France. How are you? Debbie, I'm going to be sending you an email soon. So I hope you're having a fab time away at the moment and there will be something waiting for you when you come back. Um, 
the top I'm wearing is from the Sewing for the Soul book. It's the Draft Your Own Linen T-shirt pattern. But this is one of the tops that I want to talk about today because I've made it up in linen, but it would also make up in a stretch fabric as well. So that's what we're going to be looking at mainly today. It's kind of knit fabrics. We haven't looked at knits for a while, actually. So we've got quite a few and we've got a lot of fabrics that have coordinating ribs that go with them. So they're brilliant for quite a few of our different patterns that we've got behind me today. So we're looking at kinds of different tops to wear. And one of the things that I've got, you want to throw something over, don't you really? Now, this is our Imogen. This is our revamped Imogen. Now we've got this as a dress, but actually it would work brilliantly if you shortened it and just had it as the Imogen top but with the rib at the neckline. Again, it just makes it a really quick, easy make. And it's something just to throw on over a pair of jeans um, and something like, or you know, a pair of Nell trousers or aerial trousers that we've got hanging up behind me as well. If you wanna just bung a cardigan on over the top, then the quince cardi is a really good one. Now this is from our mechanicals range. It's a PDF only, but you can order the paper pattern to be printed via our printing service. So you don't have to spend hours sticking together 10 million bits of paper. It will come as one, but you can order that separately through the website as well, which is really cool. Sharon's popped up the links, which is brilliant. Now, the quince cardi is lovely, actually. It's a really nice one. And we've got a few sweater knits that would be brilliant for this. But it also makes it up as um, in a lighter weight kind of t-shirt fabric if you want something a bit lighter just to throw on in the evening or if it's a bit cooler during the day. It also works really nicely as a sweat in sweatshirt fabric as well. So it's a really versatile pattern. Um, Sean's popping links up. That's brilliant. Morning Sandy from Sunny Dorset. Sounds rather nice down there too, doesn't it? So fabrics, let's get into what we've got. We have got the multi-stripe cotton jersey. Now this is a really lovely one actually. And I think this would work for boys and girls actually. Let's take that off so we can open it out. Now again, I haven't got it up today, but we have got the basic snug t-shirt actually, which is another really good basic kind of layer um, pattern, which is another one from the mechanicals. Now that would make up beautifully in this with a nice pair of um, denim jeans, black jeans, um, or even a pair of aerial cargo pants, just a simple little t-shirt over the top. And then you've got this beautiful, gorgeous kind of rust colored double knit. Now this is a sweater knit, but it's a double sweater knit. So it has that beauty, it's so, oh my God, it's so soft. You, like, you, you know when kids have that little kind of blanky thing that they just want to snuggle like that? That's what this fabric is all about. It's absolutely beautiful. Let's just check what we've actually called it. Chestnut, it is chestnut actually. It is lovely kind of reddy brown, super soft knit jersey. So a quince cardigan in this would actually be really lovely just to kind of give you that extra snuggle kind of thing which I think is beautiful. Now another pattern that would work with a sweater knit that we haven't done for a while actually is Julia. Now the Julia top this is our lovely big square kind of oversized top. Now it has got a cowl on it. You don't have to put the cowl on it, but actually it does make it really nice. And again, this is a really lovely one for just throwing on over the top of everything else when it gets a little bit cooler. Um, and I love the cowl shape on it. It has integral pockets. So there's a really cute little way of making those pockets actually, which they're kind of part of the whole body of the top as well, which is really nice. So that could be another one that you might want to think about in a sweater knit. Now, if you are a little bit concerned about the slimness of the sleeve, now bear in mind, this is a size eight. So it's quite wide and big and boxy in the body, but it is snug on the sleeves. Now you can always just knock it up a size on the sleeve. If you're worried about the stretch and the fabric going over your forearms, it's a really easy alteration to make. So that's the lovely Julia. Now I've put it with a pair of our Nell trousers. Now again, these are really lovely. 
I've got um, some Raimi and some double gauze actually that will make up really nicely into Nell. Nell are like secret pyjamas, they're one of Sharon's favourites and made up in a double gauze make them really nice light pair of trousers to wear but then if you've got something nice and kind of comfy that you just want to throw on over the top it's a really cool little outfit that's going to take you right the way through the day and into the evening as well which is a nice one to have there. Oops, now I'm going to come on to you later. This is Rosa, but we'll have a look at that in a sec. So we have got the chestnut super soft knit and we've got the multi-stripe cotton jersey. Two of those together I think look really nice actually and would make a really lovely little outfit. Um, morning Jules, how are you? Watching whilst working. Jules was one of our diploma ladies and has just graduated. Um, brilliant shines popping up all the links, which is rather fabulous. So I'm gonna pop those down there, out the way. This is gorgeous. I mean, to be honest, you could just have a metre and a half of this and use it as a massive great wrap and it would just be so gorgeous, it really would. It's 150 wide, so you're gonna want at least a metre and a half to kind of give you that sort of square wrap shawl kind of thing. Oh, it's so lovely, I can cuddle it, it's so nice. So, there we go. Now, another fabric that you might want to think about, or another top that you might want to think about throwing over, is our Olivia. Now, that was a pattern from last month, and some of you have done some amazing colour blocking. This is our colour blocked Olivia. So again, we've just chosen some brighter colours here. Some of you have put up pictures in our Send Me Something Facebook group and they look fantastic, they really do. I love it when you can see what people have done with the pattern and taken it and made it their own, which is really cool. Um, so some of the colourways you might want to think about, we can put together in here. But this is a really lovely, again, it's another one. You've got a little towel, a top or a shirt or a vest top underneath this and it's another one just to throw on um, during the day. It is actually my favourite top at the moment. I know. The latest pattern is usually always my favourite, but this one really is actually. And I'm going to have to make up myself up in some more. I've got a pale grey one, which is really rather nice. But I do need to make another colour block one, I think. So, if we're thinking about that, and you want to kind of add in some other colours, or even if you want to have the whole thing in this, this is a really lovely one. It is got lots it's got lots of little faces on it which is really cool can you see that I think they're amazing all different kinds of faces Oops. there we go so Sharon's popping up the links to everything now what's this one called she's going to beat me to it now I'm going to have a quick look and see if I can find the label oh there we go I need me other glasses now it's called Perfect Portraits. Now this is a fleece back sweatshirting. So again, this is going to keep you nice and snuggly when you've got evenings on the beach or sitting in the garden with a barbecue. This is the kind of fabric that you want to just throw over and keep you nice and snuggly and warm. So it's a pale kind of grey background and it has a dark almost crimson kind of red print to it, but actually it would go with lots of different things. So we've got the two different greys that you could put with this. It does actually work quite nicely with, oh, which is this one here, which is another fleecy backed one, Alpine fleece, and this is burnt orange. So actually the two of those work quite nicely together if you were thinking of colour blocking. You could just make it in the whole thing. I like this actually, this is a really nice one. So it has a much darker fleecy inside. You could actually have this fleece on the outside if you wanted to. I think you'd just be stroking yourself there all the time, wouldn't you, because it'd be too nice. Um, perfect portraits, there we go, that's it. <laughs> Linda says, the faces freak me out. <laughs> I think that's funny. I quite like it. It's like a little continuous line drawing. I think that's quite cool. Um, Alice says, love that, really quirky. I know, it's brilliant, isn't it? So you could certainly have the faces in that lovely sort of middle orange section 
of um, the Olivia sweatshirt there, which I think would be a really cool way of mixing it up. You could have this and then with one of the dark, or maybe even with a darker grey actually would look really cool. Let me pull that out so you can have a quick look, although it's supposed to be going a bit later. But there, you see you've got those three together. Actually look really nice. So that would be a really nice way of kind of colour blocking everything. Just to give you some ideas. There we go. Let's put that one back in there. So we've got perfect portraits, which it, I think is really cool. Now, whether the, whether the faces, faces are freaking you out or not, actually, I think that's, and it's really heavy as well. <laughs> I'm getting my work out today. There we go. And we've got the burnt orange Alpine fleece. Again, this is a lovely one. Now I'm going to leave that there because it kind of works with our rainbows single jersey. Now this is really lovely. There are so many different colours in this that it kind of goes with everything. So I've put it in this particular section here, but it would go with loads of others as well. Now it's called, she says, Fortunate Chirappa. She says with a really confused face. Fortunate Chirappa, it's called Cotton Jersey. But I think this is basically rainbows, which I think is really cool. So again, you could have a really simple little t-shirt that sits underneath one of the other sweatshirting fabrics that we've got. Um, you could make yourself a little flute vest top if you wanted to. But I think a snug in this would look really nice, actually. Um, the nice thing about the t-shirt that I'm wearing is it would make up in um, a single jersey as well. So you could have, instead of using the linen like I've done, you could actually have um, a single jersey, knit fabric, there's no darting, there's no shaping in it, so you don't need to worry about that. It's just literally gathered into a binding because I've used the linen, or you could have just a little bit of rib. So we've got the dusky pink rib here, actually, which looks really nice with that. With the, with the rainbow. So another little combination that you might want to put together. Oops. There we go. Fortunate Chirappa. I don't know, it probably means something, but I've got no idea what it is. Anyway, rainbows, that's what we call it. Um, so that could be quite a nice little one. It doesn't have to be a huge rib. It just needs to be a little tiny one. You could even just make a binding out of the rib actually so, so you've got a little bit of contrast there which I think would look really nice as well so there's a couple of different options there I love that I think it's just so cheerful isn't it it's just optimistic fabric there we go so that's the fortunate chirappa whatever that means I don't know maybe it's something in a different language maybe I'm just showing my ignorance now I don't know Let's move those out of the way. So we've got the orangey ones out of the way. Now we're getting into, now these are just beautiful. I love these. Let's move those along a bit. So I've kind of put the kind of dusky pinks next to the greys today, because they really kind of work. Now we've got quite a few different ones here, but what is so lovely is you can kind of mix and match. So if you like that whole kind of, um, coordinated kind of look this would work really nicely actually you've got a pair of um, now we've got actually we've got the navy Raimi I'm going to bring that up here because that just looks really lovely too now this works with loads of different things now Raimi is a kind of it's kind of late they call it Raimi linen but it's a kind of it has a texture to it it's really beautiful fabric We've got more colours coming in. This is just a plain navy and I love it. I don't know if you can get in close to see the, the kind of texture on the fabric. But it has a slightly kind of crinkled sort of feel to it, which is really rather nice actually. I love this. We have got it coming in in other colours, but we've got navy. I've just bought navy out today because it kind of goes with everything really. Um, but this is beautiful. Now this made up as a pair of aerial cargo pants again it's just a really nice kind of relaxed way of wearing your clothes really nice casual kind of style I love the pockets on here these are 
kind of pleated patch pockets, but they've got a little flap as well. The nice thing about the Aerial is that they do have a proper fly. So if you want something that's a little bit more like a proper trouser, but still really casual and easy to wear, these are perfect. You've got the cutaway patch pockets, which are nice and simple. If you wanted to, you could just have them elasticated because they're half elasticated on the back, but a flat waistband on the front. And they've got the elasticated cuffs around the ankles as well, so they're really lovely. Um, a pair of aerial cargo pants in the navy rainy, again, would look really nice. You could then, if you wanted to, just knock up a really quick little kind of top, a little sweatshirt. Now we've got the double gauze here, which again goes perfectly with our dusky pink rib. So we've got the printed double gauze, which I think is really lovely. And that's got the beautiful, that is almost like, a, I think it is a navy. You could kind of take it both ways. You could either take this little print in here to be dark navy, or it's like a graphite gray. Either way, I think it would work perfectly. So a really beautiful little Imogen top, really lovely, simple raglan sleeve, much easier to put in than a set in sleeve. You could literally run one of these up in an hour. They are so easy to do. Something like that. And then you've got a beautiful, what have we called this one? This again is Alpine Fleece. What colourway is it? Dusty Plum. And then you've got a really lovely longer line cardigan in the quince that you could just throw over the top. So some really nice little outfit ideas here. If you didn't want print, we also have the plain. Now, I have seen somebody make up the plain double gauze in this beautiful dusky pink, but they put a dark grey rib with it and it looked fantastic. So we've got the dark grey here. So again, that would be rather nice if you wanted to go for a, a contrast. So rather than going for matchy matchy, if you wanted a bit of a contrast, then you could go for something like this. If you wanted to stick with the navy, then we have also got a navy rib with the pink double gauze, which I think is quite nice, actually. I like a little bit of contrast there. So that would work really nicely. Again, just a really simple little outfit, pair of white trainers, and that's it. You're away, aren't you? It would take you right the way through the weekend. So we've got... Dusky pink double gauze, which is our plain version. Now again, this would make up so beautifully in lots of our different tops. Now, you could even make this up in a Julia top. Now we make Julia up in linen, and I think Sharon might have even popped the link up to that. I love the pink combination, says Mari. I know, it's really nice. Um, now let me just see if she's popped it up. Uh, Mari says, Chirapa means fluke in Spanish. Fortunate fluke. Thank you for that. Fortunate fluke. Lucky rainbows. Fortunate rainbow. Rainbows are hope, aren't they? So maybe you're right there. Um, let me just see. Now, Sharon might have. There we go. Ah, oh, she's put a Technique Tuesday up there. Um, Sharon, was that one linked to the... Um, Image, uh, Julia hack for the, it's really easy. What we've done with our Julia in order to make it in woven is just add a kind of gusset all the way up the side and into the sleeve. So I think a Julia top in this would just be so gorgeous. I mean, the color we've kind of got right there, but with those little pockets, the double gauze just gives it that really lovely kind of squishy, comfy sort of feel as well, actually, which would be really nice. So you've got a beautiful little combination there. So let's pop that there. Now, again, if you wanted to kind of keep that lovely, soft, chalky sort of look, um, grey is lovely, actually. So again, I'm going to pop that there. Let's move the Raimi back into the navies because that goes with so many different things. Oh, that's the day one for the Julia top. Brilliant, thanks, Sharon. 
Um, with the t-shirt, you're wearing be okay in double gauze. Absolutely, Linda, absolutely. That's the other thing that I was going to mention. The shape that I'm wearing, this is the t-shirt from the um, Sewing for the Soul book. So it's a really simple one to draft. You're just literally using your own body measurements. Um, it's ever so easy. It's basically a T-shape and you gather in the sleeves and you put a neckline on it. It's dead easy. But this would make up beautifully in any of the double gauzes that we've got at the moment, actually. It'd be a really nice combination. So let's move the pinks out the way. We'll get the sweatshirts up out the way as well. Let's move that up there because I've got so much to show you today. There we go. Well, actually it looks like loads because they're all big bits of fabric. So let's move these down a bit. There we go. I really am getting my work out today, aren't I? Gosh. Now, greys. Some people think it's a little bit boring. I think it is basically a neutral kind of colour. Grey, I love. Now, I've got an origa uh, Olivia Origami sweatshirt in the pale grey, and I love it. It goes with everything. I wear it with my bright yellow necklace, with my jeans, and it just goes with everything. It really does. So you could make your Olivia sweatshirt just out of one colour. I actually want to make another one in dark grey because I think dark grey with some brighter colours again works really nicely. So you've got the two there together. Now I actually would put, now we have got another navy which I haven't brought down but I could put that in with it too. But if you're thinking about putting a brighter colour with it but you're not really kind of going for too much kind of colour clash. Now I'm going to move this one out of the way. This is the pink that we've used in our, <laughs> that's it, Olivia. I was gonna say the dash, kind of 1980s dash version of Olivia. Does anybody remember those? Do you remember those dash tracksuits? My mum used to get a new one for her Christmas present every year. That was like highlight of the year it was. Um, but you can see how just gray with a brighter pop of color can work really nicely actually. I love this, it's a proper candy pink. Um, quite a blue pink so it might not be for everybody but then if you don't have it next to your skin it makes it much easier to get away with these bright pops of colour. Uh, oh, Rotha says love grey too it makes any colour pop it really does it really does Rotha you're absolutely right. Oh Linda says um, when you sew double gauze do you need to use a lightning stretch stitch? Now, one thing I would recommend when sewing double gauze, you don't need to use a stretch stitch, but what I would use is a walking foot. Because you've got such a crinkly kind of fabric, using a normal presser foot is gonna push out the crinkles and flatten those off. So it can make it stretch a little bit and you can get kind of wibbly sorts of seams. But if you use a walking foot, now whether you've got an integral one that's part of your sewing machine or whether you want to have a separate one, then um, use one of those. It does make your life a much, much easier. So that's good. Are we all right for batteries? Okay, we can always move things around. Technical glitches, it's always the way, isn't it? So I'm gonna pop that one back there. So we've got the dark gray and the light gray. Now again, we've got the printed double gauze. So either of those would make a brilliant kind of throw over or a quince cardigan if you want to have something that's a little bit softer, lighter weight underneath. So we've got, this is the same as the dusky pink, but it's gray and I love it. It's got a little bit of a, almost like a fawny kind of ochre sort of color in the print there. But again, that would work really nicely with our dark grey marl rib and I think that'd be a really nice combination. Another one to use. Now we've got also, again if you're thinking something more kind of sweatery sort of thing in terms of a, a knit fabric to go into your quince, we have the same as the burnt orange but again we've got a grey marl. I love this, this is so nice. This is just beautiful, I mean the, it just feels so soft. 
I want to cuddle it. Actually, we've, got, we've just had the um, Fit Your Dummy course that was last week, and Edwina, bless her, she uh, she kind of <laughs> she was getting very up close and personal with her mannequin that was padded out, um, and it was quite a quite a cuddly one. So we did have some nice pictures of that, which will go up later. I can let you have those, Harriet, later. Um, so yeah, really cuddly. This is gorgeous. Again, you could just have a big piece of this. I just wrap it around you, to be perfectly honest, and that would be a great way of just keeping a little bit warmer in the evenings. Um, this one is cool. I think it's probably cool grey marl or something like that. Let's have a do double check. Sharon would be sticking heathered grey. Oh no, that's the rib. What have we got here? Light grey marl. That's it. Sweating it. Um, and again, you've got those lovely. I think all the greys together don't look boring at all actually they don't look flat because you've got the different tones and the different shades there I think it works really nicely actually so that might be another little color story that you're thinking about um, so there we go we've got the two different weights of sweatshirting fabric light and dark and we've got the double gauze in a print which is really rather lovely and we've got the sweat in it as well which would just make a really nice um throw over cardigan julia top actually oh yes massive comfy cowl which is really lovely especially in the evenings in this beautiful soft sweat in it i think would be amazing i really do love those right let's pop those down there so we can get on to the blues now. The story of the blues. Oh my God, who sang that? I can't remember now. That's like a proper 1980s band. I'm showing my age now. Um, oh, Pete, somebody. Don't know. Can you remember what I'm talking about? The story of the blues? Pete, I want to say Pete somebody. I want to say Pete Waterhouse. No, it's not him. Oh, brain's fading. Never mind. Harriet's Googling it. Wow, yes, it was. That's proper 1980s band name, isn't it? There, right. Now we're on to the blues. I've got, now I've got, now I've got the tune in my head. I can't get rid of it now. Uh, let's just make sure that's sitting there. Perfect. So, onto the kind of navies, because let's face it again, navy kind of works for everybody, doesn't it, really? Um, now, this is the Raimi that I was mentioning earlier. Now, again, I love this. A pair of Nell trousers would work really nicely with this, as well as the aerials that I was talking about earlier. Nell trousers, there we go. Secret pyjamas. Flat front, elasticated back, so it doesn't look like you're wearing elasticated trousers, because let's face it, we're not there yet, are we? with fully elasticated trousers. Um, Lizzie Jones, Lizzie, it was, no, it wasn't Paul Jones. It was a band called War, apparently. Harriet's just Googled it. I'm gonna have to go and find it on YouTube now, afterwards. So there we go. Um, Nell trousers. Now I quite fancy, oops. Now, she keeps falling off the hanger because I haven't talked about her yet. There we go, Rosa, say there. Nell trousers, aerial trousers, really nice, kind of nipped in on the ankles. That gives you a slimmer kind of a line. So it means you could have something wider on the top. So we have got the Dobby Spot double gauze. Now this is more like a kind of a denim blue. It's actually wound inside out. So the Dobby, the little Dobby Spot, I don't know if you can get a close up on that, Harriet. You might be able to see it if I move it slightly. Yeah, so it has like a little tiny spot, roughly every every inch, I suppose, on the fabric. And I love that. I think it's such a nice one. It really does work brilliantly. Now, again, I quite like it with a darker navy contrast. So again, if you're thinking about all those navy, all those blue kind of, they're slightly sort of smoky blue tones, dusty blue tones actually work really nicely together. Another little top. Now you could have, I think probably another Imogen. Now, 
I would say vegan, but we say vegan all the time. So I'm not avoiding vegan today, but other options would be something like the Imogen Top, actually. Pete Wiley, Karen, thank you. That's who it was. Yes, Pete Wiley and Wah. Yes, Pete Wiley. Oh, damn, I should really properly show my age now, aren't I? That's really bad. Um, so we've got a whole kind of blue thing going on. Again, you could put something really bright with this. Um, we've got a fantastic tutorial in the sewing studio for making a little necklace out of a bias strip and polystyrene balls. Now, Sharon, there's a link for you if you want to find one. I don't know if it's still available. Um, but that's a really, so you could have a beautiful, bright, any scraps of cotton that you've got, something, you know, bright purple or pinks or yellows or bright reds, turquoise even, would go perfectly with all of this. And it would just kind of lift it a little bit. Now we've got, this is our third sweater knit. And I love this. So this is more like a kind of a soft denim blue. Now again, it just works really nicely with these. Look at that, the colours together. Again, it's not flat. It's a plain, they're all planes. We've gone with very few prints this week, actually, purely because I wanted to, there we go. Sharon's found the link, perfect. That's the polystyrene balls to make your necklace. So again, that's another way of just adding a little bit of colour into your outfit. But you can see, it's all blue, it's all smoky, it's very soft, it's easy to wear. It's not harsh in any way, but it's not boring. I think this is a lovely kind of color combination, actually. It works really nicely. So we've got our, I think this is a midnight blue rib. I'm trying to put the link up. Darkest Navy, it's called. Darkest Navy, we have got Dobby Spot in steel blue. This is double gauze. We've got the navy washed Raimi. And we've got, where are we? Oh, there we've got Marl Blue Super Soft Knit Jersey. So that again is a little colour story, a little outfit kind of combination is a really nice one. Now I'm going to leave that there because I think it goes really nicely with the next lot that we've got. So I'm going to move the rib, move the double gauze, but I'm going to leave the Raimi there actually because that's another one that's going to work really nicely together. So if you want a little bit more colour, again we can go back to that beautiful candy French terry, which is the one that we've used in our um, colour blocked Olivia. Again, it just, I don't know, this is really weird. Um, do any of you suffer from synesthesia? Which is a really interesting one. I taste colours, which is a bit weird. I know, I hope it's going to look at me as if to say, you're a complete weirdo. Um, but I know Marijan, who teaches our bookbinding, has a similar kind of thing. But this, to me, is sweet. Do you see what I mean? Whereas the chestnut that we had earlier is a more of a sour kind of colour. But this is sweet. This is almost like um, Morello cherries. That's what it reminds me of, this colour. That's what it kind of tastes of. Weird, I know, but there we go. Um, they call it mauve. I think it's more like a candy pink, actually. It, does, it, does, it is more of a candy pink, but they've called it mauve. Anyway, but it does go beautifully with our polka dot single jersey so this is navy multi -pol polka dot cotton jersey now again this would be really nice in one of these t-shirts that i'm wearing really really simple we've got the plain navy rib that you could put with it you've also got the dusky pink that you could pull out and that would look quite nice with it too but we've also i mean we haven't got them all here today but we've got lots of other brighter color ribs that you might want to put with this so that would give you a really nice candy floss exactly that's what this is candy floss you're absolutely right um you could just have a little bit of self fabric just to use for um a little bit of instead of a rib as a band 
kind of thing. So you don't have to have any contrast on it. That way you could put it with lots of different things if you wanted to. So this would be really lovely actually. Again, it, because it's a stretch, it's really easy to work with. This shape of t-shirt that I'm wearing is out of the Sewing for the Soul book. Dead, dead easy to create your own pattern. Don't be intimidated by pattern cutting. It really isn't difficult. It's basically join the dots. That's all it is. So anybody coming to our pattern cutting classes, <laughs> all we are doing is basically joining the dots. What we've got to do is work out where to put the dots in the first place. That's all. Dead easy. But again, you can see a little colour story building here. A nice pair of um, Raimi trousers. You could even have, um, I haven't got it out here, but the Clio jumpsuit actually would look really nice with a little t-shirt underneath especially one of a similar kind of shape to this. So it's not too close fitting, which would be really nice for the summer. And then with a nice little sweatshirt over the top in the origami sweatshirt, um, you could even do an Olivia out of this actually. And that would look really nice too, uh, Olivia, um, an Imogen out of this. And that would work really well too. Lots of different options here, but this is beautiful. I love this and it's a really good quality um, stretch as well. So you're not going to get too much what they call grinning through here. Grinning is when you stretch a fabric and you can see the base colour underneath it. So there's not too much of that on this. It happens mostly with darker fabrics that are really quite darker than you've got the white base fabric underneath. Nice little colour combination. I like this one. So we've got the multi polka dot in a single jersey. Brilliant for t-shirts, that kind of thing what I'm wearing or the snug t-shirt even. Then we've got the mauve, mauve melange. I love that name, that word melange. That's such a cool word. Um, in This is loop back sweatshirting. So it has that slightly sort of toweling-y sort of finish at the back, which would be really nice actually. That works lovely. Let's pop that in there. And then we've got the marl blue, blue marl, super soft, double knit sweater jersey. Oh, let me, I am getting my work out today, aren't I? Oh, my tennis elbow is not going to get very well. Okay, we're going to get better, is it doing this? Come on, let's wrap that round. There we go. So we've got some more double gauzes coming up. Let's pop the rib there. Right, let's have a look at them now. These are lightening up a little bit. So, there we go. I've put white in because I think a white double gauze t-shirt is just going to be a real classic, isn't it? It's so beautiful. It's like a white linen, but if you want something that's slightly different to a linen, a double gauze is a really nice one to use. So again, you could make up a t-shirt like I'm wearing. You could do an Imogen. We've got the white rib to go with it. And again, it's just one of those classics, isn't it? You can wear it with anything. Stick it over a pair, you know, with a pair of um, denim shorts on the beach, wear it with some jeans, aerial cargo pants, the Nell trousers. You could put it over a, a slightly posher pair of Porsches if you want a nice pair of linen Porsche trousers for the summer. It's gonna give you lots and lots of different options. Um, I feel sorry for Rosa. She's coming, Julia, she's coming, don't worry. Don't worry. Um, there we go. That's it. Lovely. Now you could, if you wanted to, even use this for a Julia top, actually, which is a really nice one. So again, just have the white rib around the neck. So instead of using the cowl, you've just got that plain, simple neckline, which I think is really nice. I love it. I will be making myself some white gauze t-shirts, actually, because they are just so perfect. So this is just our plain double white double gauze, a really good classic thing to make up a t-shirt in. Let's pop that at the back. Now another one which I think is really lovely, this is our tie-dye and I think this is the perfect kind of weather for this. We're heading into the summer, we want something that's going to be a little bit beachy. We can go back on holiday again can't we? Um, well, Linda says, white is not an option when you own bearded collies. Well, yes, I kind of feel your pain there. But maybe something that's 
actually we've got something that's in the, that won't show the dirt coming up so that'll be fine um, but I love this this is great actually so again you could use this for um, now let's get Rosa out Rosa is our batwing top which is only available in the sewing studio now again because there's no shaping in this you can make this out of double gauze but if you use a stretch on the waistband, the cuffs and the neckline, you've got that lovely kind of blousy 1980s kind of vibe going on, which I think would be really cool in um, the tie dye double gauze, actually, which would be a nice one. So this would work actually with quite a few of the other fabrics that I've um, shown you earlier on. Um, and we can pop her up there. So I would put, either a white or a navy rib with that and that would work really nicely actually I think that would be really cool there we go Sharon's popped up the link to the tie-dye double gauze um <laughs> Mary says when I wear white I become a magnet for tomato chili curry sauce do you know I kind of feel your pain actually but we live in hope we live in hope I used to have a pair of white linen trousers with two children under the age of six and we managed to get away with it. We've managed to get away with it. God knows how. I don't know. But there we go. So that's our tie-dye double gauze. I think it looks, actually, it looks much better when you see it in a big piece like that rather than just on the board. So I think that's a beautiful one. Now, I have to say, a lot of these other fabrics would make up in our dresses as well. This is a Lavinia. would be amazing, actually. It'd be really cool. So let's pop that one over there. And let's move the, now I can move that Raimi out of the way now too. So things that are a little bit lighter. Now we have got another double gauze, which is Oxford blue. And we have a rib again that goes with it, which is a really nice one. So this again, you could put with the um, Navy Raimi, just another really simple little top. This would make up really nicely actually because you've got the rib here again that would work as a really simple little rosa top you could then put that over a pair of trousers or even a pair of robin leggings from the mechanicals as well which would be another really nice way of using those two fabrics together so this is oxford blue and we've got the cotton ribbing again in oxford blue so the two are kind of designed to go together, which is really nice. It makes it much easier to kind of put things together. Again, this would make up in a Julia, a really nice, simple, just throw it on over the top kind of Julia top, which would be really lovely. So let's move that one towards the back. Then, oops, it's fallen off the table, but don't show it around. That's fine. Um, kind of slightly more tealy sorts of colours now, which I think are rather nice. And again, these work for lots of different people, lots of different colourings as well. We've got another Alpine fleece. This, I think, oh, that's so, oh, it's another soft fabric. It's so nice. What colour is this one? That is dusty blue. So it's an Alpine fleece in a dusty blue. So again, you've got that kind of over layer, that kind of top layer that you could use for a quince t-shirt or even a Julia top. You could use it for your origami, Olivia origami sweatshirt as well actually, and just have one in just one single colour, which again is really nice. I quite like that. Now I've got this as a single jersey. So again, you could have this as a rosa with a contrast rib. So this is a pale kind of teal or ocean blue it's called actually. So I think that would work really nicely together as two different colors. So again, if you want something that's a little bit more patterned, a bit more printed um, with a bit more interest to it, you could go for quite a nice little print like this particular jersey, which is called Gardener's Paradise in blue gray. Um, I get a lovely one. I think it's kind of really stylized, slightly, slightly kind of mid-century styled flowers, which again, I think is quite cool, actually. So that as a kind of combination, again, would work really well. So, well, I'm going to sneeze. Oh, excuse me. That was a 
held in one that was, wasn't it? Oh dear, Charlie, mind you, you should hear Charlie sneeze. It feels like the house is going to come off. He said his head is going to, if he tries to do a quiet sneeze, his head will actually explode. But there we go. Um, so this is a kind of a tealy sort of colourway. Now I wanted to put this, throw this into the mix as well. Now I quite like a little bit of stripe. If you wanted to go a little bit bolder, you could again have something like the Rosa or even the Imogen if you wanted to and have the stripe as the contrast. So you could have the, um, I mean, it is a single jersey, it's not a rib, but you could still get away with it. It would work absolutely fine and have this as the contrast around the neck, the cuffs and the waist. So again, that would work quite nicely if you had those two together as a little bit of a mix and match kind of thing. So this is a teal and white striped single jersey. So again, just basic t-shirt fabric, um, but that would work really nicely as well. You could have this just as a simple t-shirt underneath. Um, well, actually, we've got a t-shirt, a snug t-shirt made up in this that we put underneath our Clio jumpsuit. So you can have a look at the photos on the website for that as well, actually, which is a nice way of using it. So that's quite a nice little combination. Now, on top of all of that, we have got one of our embroidered double gauzes. Now these are beautiful. Sharon's made a pair of uh, Nell trousers in the navy version of this, but we've got, it goes just so beautifully with the ocean, deep ocean, ocean blue rib. So again, if you wanted something that was double gauze that wasn't, but just something that had a little, that wasn't too plain, then having the embroidery in this would work really nicely. Now, I love this, the, the kind of beautiful kind of floral embroidery. Actually, talking of floral, um, we have a brand new workshop coming up. It's uh, run by a friend of mine, Mel Ward. Now, you can find her on Instagram and see her stuff, which is absolutely incredible. And what she's coming up to do with us is some stenciling. Now she does botanical stencils and they are absolutely exquisite. They really are. She has created her own inks as well to be able to use. And they can, you'll, um, during the workshop, you'll learn how to use the stencils, the right kind of amount of ink to put through them to create the designs that you want. Um, if Sharon can pop up the link for the workshop in a sec, then um, you can just see how beautiful her stuff is. It's not just, oh, here's a stencil, stencil it. There's a stencil, stencil it. The way she puts them together make a composition as well. So it's not just plonking it on. You're thinking about the designs that you're creating on the cushion. So we're starting with a cushion, but actually, there we go. She's put the link up to the um, stencils there. So do have a look, check her out on Instagram, Mel Ward. Her stuff is amazing. It is so beautiful. It really is. She's developed her own colours and her own inks and her own stencils. So you get a kit that's part of the workshop as well. Now, can you imagine having something like that on a T-shirt, on a really simple linen T-shirt? It would look incredible. It really would. So I would urge you to book this quickly because I know it's going to get full. We've got eight people that we can have on the workshop. Um, and of course there'll be tea and cake here as there usually is. Um, I can't wait for this, I'm really excited and um, I'm kind of hoping that we don't get it full because I really want to take part in this, I really want to do a bit of this myself um, because I think it would be a great way of doing it on all kinds of different things. So once you've mastered that basic technique and the reason we do it on a cushion is because it's easy and it's quick to do. But once you've got that technique, Mel's done it on jeans and she's created this beautiful kind of printed leg on her jeans that she's then embroidered on top of. And it looks incredible, it really does. Her attention to detail is absolutely spot on, it really is. And I think it's gonna be a fantastic workshop. So do check it out. I can't sing her praises highly enough. I'm really excited that she's gonna come on board and do some stuff with us. Um, because she's traveling all the way up from Dorset to come and do this with us, which is a proper favor. So I can't wait. So I digress slightly, but we were talking about kind of botanical floral things with the embroidered double gauze that we've got here. Now this colorway is, 
make sure I've put it up already, Air Force Blue. Now they call it Air Force Blue, but it's, it's kind of more like a, more like an ocean blue, which is why the ocean blue rib goes with it really nicely. But it's part of this whole kind of tealy, soft blue kind of color story here. But I think this is absolutely beautiful. Now again, this would be amazing on loads of our other projects, but we're kind of focusing on tops today. So again, this as the t-shirt that I'm wearing at the moment, again, would be a really lovely one. It's all about easy things, isn't it? Sometimes you want things that are a bit more complicated, like the Cesario shirt. So we're trying to mix up our patterns. Some really, really dead easy to throw together and a quick, easy makes just to kind of get your sojo back again. Other times you want something that's a little bit more of a slow project that you need to think about and immerse yourself in. So the Cesario shirt, that's one of those. But this t-shirt is a nice, quick and easy one. And again, it works in loads of different fabrics. Oops, let's pop that up there. So we've got the little kind of tealy kind of color range here. Let's pop those over to the back. Ooh, there we go. We have got some other workshops coming up. We've got book binding again, which is on the 12th of June. Now, if you want something creative to do with the man in your life, Father's Day coming up, bookbinding is actually a really nice one to do. Um, we've had several blokes come and do the bookbinding workshops here um, and they kind of get the bug because it's a little bit, you've got to be quite precise, you've got to be quite technical with it, which is a really nice way of doing it. And MJ teaches it in such a beautiful way. Anybody who's done the bookbinding will know, actually. So if you're looking for something kind of creative to do with your dad, it's a really nice one to come and book. So we have got spaces coming up on the 12th of June for that one. We've also, now we've just done the Fit Your Dummy workshop. We did that last week and it was really, really good fun. The photos look fantastic, they really do. They really are your double, basically. And it will help you so much in actually just being able to fit things better because it's all very well trying something on and looking at it in the mirror, but you're never gonna be able to kind of look behind you and see. You need really to have that step back and look at it in the third person kind of thing. And actually putting a toile or something like that on a mannequin that is far more your shape makes such a difference, it really does. So we've got three spaces left coming up for the next one um, in June, actually. And then if you really fancy treating yourself, we actually have one space left on our August diploma, uh, retreat, not the diploma, the retreat that we've got coming up in August, which is August Bank Holiday. It's at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Stratford and it is a joy of a weekend. It really is. Total self-indulgence. Absolutely all about you. What you want to make. You get everything included. All of your meals are included. It's beautiful. The hotel is right on the river. So you can sit outside and have a nice little cocktail in the evening on the riverbank. Um, and Ciel and I are going to be there to help you with all of your sewing projects. So it's a really, really gorgeous one to come and take part in. So we have one place left on that as well. There we go. Sharon's popping all the links up for the workshop. So that's really cool. Lovely. Now, back to fabrics. So again, this is another one of our double gauze, our embroidered double gauzes. Because it's a slightly, I don't know, it's a slightly lighter colour, you might actually be able to see the design a bit better in this. But again, this is beautiful. This is a really lovely kind of soft. It's not quite a mint green. What do they call it? Just soft green. There we go. It's almost like that lovely kind of chalky sort of feel to it. But again, we've got the rib that matches it perfectly. So it makes it really easy. You know this is going to work. Um, this is called sage green. So I suppose it is a little bit sagey, actually. But again, they work really nicely together. So again, an Imogen top, a Regan. I know I wasn't going to mention Regan. Um, a Julia top in this would work really nicely as well. A T-shirt like I'm wearing from the uh, Sewing for the Soul book. Um, lots and lots of different options with this. And I think it's a really lovely, soft, greeny kind of colour. It's a nice one to wear, actually. It looks nice against, against your skin. So it's an easy one to to put with other things. And again, this kind of color would go with um, more of an olive green, it would go with a navy, it would go with more of a, a kind of mocha brown kind of color if you want to go that way as well. So lots of different options for um, cotton ribbing. No, it's not, 
I was going to say cotton ribbing and soft green. This one is soft green embroidered double gauze. So that's another one. Now, a little bit brighter. I couldn't not have something that was bright in here. This is lovely. And again, this would make up beautifully into a rosa. So this is an art gallery single jersey. So it's super, super quality. We've got, what's it called? It's called Lacy Star Cosmos. There we go. And again, I love it. It's really bright. It's really fun and quite funky. So you've got these beautiful little kind of circular shapes of little tiny flowers in there, but with the ochre ribbing. And I think that works really nicely. So again, you've got something that's just quite bright and colorful, really cheerful, that kind of thing. If you wanted to, you could even do the t-shirt that I'm wearing. Again, it's another really easy one to wear, but I love this bright yellow. I think it's such a cool color. I have a pair of sea salt sandals that are almost exactly this color and I absolutely love it. Now, again, we're not talking about dresses today, but this would make up beautifully in the Cordelia dress. If you're looking for something that's sun, fun and summery, then this is absolutely perfect. It really is. It's beautiful fabric and it's such a good quality. So this is lazy, no, lacy. Thank you. Lacy Star Cosmos. I've got to look at the link there. <laughs> So a nice bright yellow. I know yellow is not for everybody, but I just had to include it because it is such a beautiful pop of color. Now, the other ones that I've got here. Now again, this is a single jersey and would go brilliantly with the olive, olive washed Raimi. So again, this is exactly the same as the navy one. We have got other colors coming. But if you like to kind of be a little bit more kind of coordinated, now I love this. This is beautiful. It reminds me of kind of hedgerow sort of flowers, but I think it's really pretty. So this is Blissful Brambles. There we go, hedgerow right there. So again, you can have a nice pair of Nell or Aerial cargo pants in the Raimi with a beautiful little top straight over with um, the... What was it? Blissful brambles. Now we've got, again, we've got the rib that goes with it. So it makes it really easy. Look at that. It just goes perfectly. So again, you could have something like an Imogen with a perfectly matching neckband. You could go for a Rosa. You could even go for an Imogen if you want something that's a little bit bigger and boxier. So another really nice little color, mini color story, this one. There we go. Oops. Oops, and so, so many lovely fabrics and pattern combinations. Lots of inspiration for my weekend as mother of the bride, hosting family and friends. Brilliant. I think you've got loads of things here. Perfect for mother of the bride, kind of mine host kind of thing, which I think would be a really nice way. I can feel a whole new wardrobe in the making. Anne, what's stopping you? There we go. Time. I know. I know. Before you say it, yes. Now, the final combination. Again, we're kind of toning it back down again a little bit but I wanted to put this in. Maybe I should have put this in with the greys, but again, this is another printed double gauze. So you've got the beautiful kind of mocha brown in here and a lovely soft yellow ochre. But again, it goes perfectly. We've got exactly the right kind of rib to go with it. Now, again, I haven't put it out here, but we have got, oops, sorry, Rosa, you're just in the wrong place today, aren't you? We have got a gorgeous tent cell here. So again, a pair of aerial cargo pants with this as a little top, an Imogen or a Rosa. You could again make up a Julia top in the double gauze. And I think you've got a really gorgeous combination. Now, a lot of people prefer those lovely kind of muted, almost muddy kind of colors, but I think with the right skin tone and hair color, they can look amazing. They really can. They're not boring at all. Nothing, it doesn't have to be all about bright colors all the time, does it? You pick out the colors that work for you. So I think those are really, that's another nice little combination there. So we've overrun as usual, because I'm waffling too much, but don't forget to check out the workshops that we've got coming up. We have a lot more workshops in the planning. 
um, which is really cool. If there is anything that you want us to do, let us know. You can message us on social media or you can send us an email. Um, do have a look at Mel's stencil workshop. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. It really is. It's a gorgeous way of using and adapting fabrics for um, clothes and home furnishings as well. You could do it on lampshades. You could do it on anything, actually, um, which is a really nice one. Um, book binding. We've got Fit Your Dummy and we've got the August Retreat. Don't forget, if you're interested in the diploma, we still have spaces on that as well. It's not starting until July. I know there are very few, there are a few people who are really keen and chomping at the bit for that, but don't worry, we're gonna get there. Um, and enjoy the sunshine while it lasts, because let's face it, our summer is three hot days in a thunderstorm, isn't it? So make the most of it whilst you can. Get out and about, and I hope you enjoy a fantastic weekend of sewing. We'll see you next week. Take care.